What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today, well, I'm going to fix something on the new to me Trans Am, so the convertible that I bought. So I want to show you guys the new top because I did get it replaced. No, I did not do it, uh, but I did have my local upholstery guy, which happens to be my neighbor, by the way. Um, they replaced it, did an awesome job. So we'll take a look at that. But uh, the main thing I want to focus on today is the antenna. But before we get to that, like I said, let's take a look at the top. Um, Look, when I was originally kind of like back and forth with this lady I bought this car from, I had already hit my upholstery guy up and said, look, can you get a top? And uh, he said, well, let me know the color, the specs, because some of them come with no back glass. Some of them come with a like vinyl style back glass. Some of them have defrost, some of them don't. So he needed some more specs. And I, man, I went back and forth on whether I should go a black top. Um, and, and the main reason, I didn't is because this car came originally with a tan and I really like the look of the tan top, especially with a tan interior. Now, the reason I thought about black was because look, obviously it's easier to keep clean. Uh, but I, I ultimately decided that tan was what I wanted to do. Look, it's going to be in the garage most of the time. I don't plan on driving it uh, where, you know, a couple people had said, like, if a bird takes a dump on it. <laughs> so um, I, I'm going to see if I can find some product to kind of treat this. They make some similar to um, like your ceramic coats for cars. They make some stuff for tops that you can coat them with and they kind of repel water. So uh, but either way, it, it looks so good, guys. And here, here's the deal. Look, this lady stored this thing with the top down, and um, that, that is a big no-no. You don't want to store any convertibles with the top down. They need to be up, and so that is what he told me to do. He said for at least three weeks, leave this thing up. It's been about two now since I've had it done. I'm sure you guys have seen it in the background of other videos, but looks so much better. Of course, all my seams were busted on both sides. We got new back glass. I can't stick my hand in the car anymore, which is good. And uh, it is a little bit different color, but you have to consider the fact that the other one had been out in the elements. And um, if you pulled this back and looked under, this is really, really close to the original color. It actually is a factory replacement top. So um, he, he did a great job. Now, I'm kind of bummed because I remember this piece and I'll show you on the other side here. Um, it is broken. And in order to get that out, he had access to that and had to have those out to replace. Uh, but I couldn't get these quick enough in order to replace it. But I do have them now. The downside is you have to put the top back in order to get this off. And so uh, we eventually will be replacing these once I give it time to kind of stretch and conform. And so um, either way, I, I'm, in, I'm in love with the top. But uh, one of the things that bugs me, I told you guys I was going to try to fix things before I did any kind of modifications. Obviously, we've got enough modifications going on with other stuff around here. So the main thing I want to do is just do little things at a time. You guys know I want to clean under the hood. I'm waiting for a couple other things, I think, before I do that. Um, I would like to do some brake replacement, clean, just give it a good cleaning. But today, I want to address this. So you can see our antenna is up, right? Obviously broken, the mast is broken. So I have a new replacement here and I'll list this in the description down below, guys. Fairly cheap, I want to say it was like, I don't even know, I want to say it was like, it was under 40 bucks. And uh, it is specially made for these cars. And he here's the deal, if your motor is bad, you're gonna have to replace the whole deal. Now we're gonna have to pull the whole thing out in order to replace the mask, but, um, or at least I'm gonna pull it out to do that. But it, you're gonna know if your motor's good or bad because when you shut the car off or turn the car on, you'll hear it. And so I can hear my motor working. So obviously the mask, which is just plastic and pretty common to break, um, that, that's all that's wrong with it. So uh, a lot of times you'll either have it under something and it tries to go up and it snaps that way. Or if you drive it in the winter and it freezes over and it tries to come up, it'll snap that way. It gets pretty brittle over the years. But either way, we're going to be replacing that today. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop this dirty trunk. I haven't even washed this car. I need to do that too. Uh, but let's pop this trunk because the spare tire has been out and I want to address that as well. I'm just going to take the thing out because it looks terrible. Uh, but let's get this thing open and see what we're dealing with. So I'm sure you guys can see what I'm talking about here. This was just laying in the trunk. Um, obviously at some point uh, they've taken the spare out and um, used it, I guess, because it's been on the ground, you can tell, but they never put it back the correct way. So I'm gonna yank this thing out of here and it's kind of cumbersome to be real honest with you. They've got stuff jammed all over. 
got the jack just set in here. And I could hear this rattling when I drove down the road. You have no idea how many Trans Am, Camaro, spare tires, and jacks I have. I think my shed out there has at least four spare tires. And they tried to kind of put it back, but I keep pretty new tires on my stuff, so I generally yank these out. I have to flatten it to get it out. I couldn't imagine trying to do this on the side of the road. If we can get this thing out of here. <clears throat> Holy cow, this may be why the antenna's broke. I may have tried to like jam it in there. So we got that out of the way. Now we have access to the antenna. So uh, a couple things we need to do. I'm gonna move you guys in closer and show you. Uh, but I'm gonna take this whole unit out. So before I do that, I'm gonna take you off the tripod, bring you over here and have you let you take a look at what we've got going on. Now we can tuck this all in like it's supposed to be. I'm gonna vacuum this out too. Let's get a little closer here and look at what's going on. So we need to unplug a couple things. So obviously our antenna, like this guy, the Motorola plug, we need to unplug that. And then there's power for when this thing's on. I don't know if I can do that with one hand, but we need to unplug that. I'll be able to get it. No. Nope. All right, so we need to unplug that. And then once we get that, there's a 10 millimeter down here at the bottom. And then there is a vent. Uh, it's actually a drain that you can see right here. We should just be able to pull that out. See the little grommet that goes in the side there. So we can pull that guy out. I'm gonna push the grommet back in actually. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit too while I've got it out. Yeah, we'll clean that grommet up. but. This is if any water gets around, it drains out the car and doesn't set down here in the, in the side. So we'll get that unplugged, get this out, and then we should be able to thread this antenna out um, through the bottom. So we've got our 10 millimeter out and you can see it's loose, but what we're probably gonna have to do is push this thing down. And then we should be able to wiggle back and forth and come straight down with it. They fight yet. Been in there a long time. Come on, there we go. Should be able to pull it all out at that point. And we've got it out of there. Now your little grommet stays on the car and you can see we pulled this guy out. So now, let's go take this thing apart and uh, check out the instructions and see what exactly we need to do. Well, now that we got it out, we're gonna take a 14 millimeter here and it, I, assuming it depends on this pretty, I'm pretty sure it's a stock antenna, but we're gonna loosen this nut on the top. You're gonna turn counterclockwise, Lucy, just like normal, it's not reverse threaded or anything. We're gonna take this nut off. You can see that's off. And then we're going to try to take this gasket off if we can. Sometimes it comes off, sometimes it doesn't. And I've never done this before. It's at least it's been a while. I've always just bought another an, a whole antenna. But the fact that the motor works and this is a forty dollar replacement opposed to finding one of these on eBay or something used, um, you know, generally they're three hundred bucks because these things are discontinued. I'm gonna see if we can get a small flathead screwdriver in here and loosen this gasket up. Maybe. Maybe easier said than done. I may not even have to, may not even have to pull that out. Let's just, let's see if we can get the antenna up. I don't know why I'm being so careful because, you know, we have a replacement. I don't want to break anything that we don't have to break, but let's get some needle nose and see if we can pull this thing up a little.
All right. So here's what's going on. Um, it says that you need to try to have somebody. So I'm going to have to plug it back in. And while it's basically trying to turn on, we need to um, have basically you need one person trying to turn the radio on the other person pulling this out as you hear the motor running. And so that's what we're going to try to do. So here's the downside. I got to thinking, you know, I could do that, right? We could put it in there and try to pull it out the way it's saying, but what if the mast is broken and we leave a piece in there? So I really don't love that method of doing it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a couple of these bolts or screws loose. Um, I'm going to take the ground strap off here. Get it out of the way. And we'll try to remember where all this stuff goes. And then I'm going to take this little clamp loose that kind of holds the motor. Just going to loosen it. I'm going to leave it in there. And then the last one I'm going to take out is this guy right here. This should hold kind of this assembly together. This is like a set screw to hold the bottom of the mast. Notice it had a washer on it too, guys. I may have to take this completely out. And so what I'm hoping is we can pull. Okay. Yeah, see the mast is broke. I think it's broke a little further down than we thought. Let's push it up and see. Yeah, look. So I wouldn't have, you're not going to be able to thread that piece out, right? If it's broken off and you can see where it's broken. So there's still a piece in there. And I don't want to leave that piece in there and try to thread the new one in and then just snap it off. So we're going to have to do a little more work uh, in order to make this happen. But we should be able to pull our antenna out now and uh, get it out of the way. I may have to... It's all greasy. Let's look in here and see if there's any additional pieces in there. We may have to drill out these rivets and uh, grab that extra piece out is what I'm afraid of. Well, I was able to pull the antenna just by pulling it out. I pulled it out of the bottom, but it's still, I, I'm still I'm almost 100% positive there's a piece in there. So we're gonna take the motor off. There's just two little um, Phillips. Hold this down. You notice there's kind of a ground strap on this. Let's pull those out, make sure there's no doesn't look like there's any washers under it. We know the motor works. Here's what we need to know though. When you're taking this apart, just make sure that you get everything. See that little gear there? So we got that loose. That's as far out as I can pull it. But the downside is, and I think, I may just kind of run those screws back in there to hold that piece of plastic um, so it doesn't separate and we have a bunch of the motor pieces. Yeah. I'll just stick them in there for now. Now here's the downside. We're gonna have to drill out. The factory has rivets uh, that hold this whole thing together. So just to give us a little more space, I'm gonna take these two bottom pieces off. This little bracket. May not have to do this, but to me, let's just get as much out of the way as we can. And then guys, you do have a ground strap. Just, I'm gonna set this stuff aside with the bolts and screws that go with it. And then if you could pull this off, that'd be great, but you don't have to. So here's what we've gotta do. We're gonna have to drill out, see there's rivets. Factory puts plastic rivets in there. And uh, we're, really, we're really concerning ourselves with this side. Uh, this side isn't as important because the mask rolls up. The mask rolls up on this side, and that's the side that we need access to. 
So we're gonna have to get a small drill bit and be very careful. We're just gonna drill the rivets. Um, as a matter of fact, you might wanna put some tape on your drill bit. I'll kinda of show you as I get it together here um, what we're gonna do. But I, I, I wanna knock the heads off these rivets so we can pull this thing apart and take a look inside. I'm starting to think it would have been easier to just buy another unit, but this is way cheaper. getting a very straight start here. I should have used my little punch to start a center hole. We'll do it that way on the other ones. But anyway, we need to drill these heads off these rivets and that means we're gonna have to replace it with some screws. So you're gonna have to source some screws. I don't think it's going to take much to get these rivets out since they're just plastic. I'm not going to drill real far. I don't really think this was meant to be serviced, you know? All right, once we do that, I'm gonna grab me a pick and we're gonna see if we can pop, um, kind of pop the heads off those rivets. Probably isn't gonna take much. Now I'm just using a flathead screwdriver and basically we're just kind of digging in and knocking the top of that, the rest of that rivet head off once we have the hole in the middle. Which, this may take me a minute to do. Uh, once we get all those off, we'll see if it separates. I think I've got them all off. So we're just going to go around here once you get an opening. And you're wanting to keep it as, you know, as straight up and down as possible, guys. Because if you flip it over and try to do this, you may have parts just fall out everywhere. So we want to pull this off. Okay. That's where we had the rivets. You can see that I kind of got... A spot to put we're gonna have to put screws back in but so we've got that we need to take this little s screw off or um, washer off I think it's more of a spacer and so I'm gonna turn this upside down and lay this stuff in here as I take it off so now we've got this little spool like I said just flip it over that way you know how it goes back together and then we should have two I think right here no, there's just one. Okay. We're going to set it in there. And then we've got this guy. Hopefully we can get it out. I'm going to have to get a pick. Oh, golly, it's greasy. So there is the reel. And I'll probably put some new grease on this as we're going. Once we get the reel out... There's another piece here. That's where your antenna actually locks in, I believe. And you could have pulled that out first. It goes around that gear. And then you can see where our motor comes out. So we're gonna pull this guy out, possibly. I'm going to have to get a pick to pull that out. It is so greasy in there. Which, look, you want grease in there to make sure, uh, you know, stuff slides up and down. I'm going to be really upset if I get this all apart and there's no piece of antenna in there. But I'm going to need pliers or something, I guess, to get this out. There it comes.
Now I'm not seeing any part of the mast in there. Oh, that's not good. Have that washer fall off the back. We need to make sure that we get it. So there's, see this little thing here? There's a washer that goes on the back. So I'm down to nothing. There is literally not one piece of that mast that is left inside here, which maybe it just disintegrated. You know, it's, it's just plastic. But uh, I did want to show you this. So remember we took this off. This pin comes out of the middle. This bushing comes up here on the side in order to get it out. So we, that lifts up and then just make sure it stays in place. Um, but then when I took this out, there is a piece on the bottom here with a small little washer. So I wanted you guys to see how that came together. That washer goes in between those two pieces of plastic and then this sets in here. So I wanted to show you guys that. Uh, but just be careful taking it apart because stuff, you know, it'll just fly out everywhere. So at this point, we're ready to go back together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this all out, put some new grease in there um, just to make sure everything's good and um, clean up, you know, this old, nasty, old, nasty grease. And I may not use a ton of stuff or I mean, spend a ton of time on that, but for sure want to clean that up. I went ahead and took a couple more things out to clean. So this little guy right here, it kind of pops up when you take that gear out anyway. Took it out to get it cleaned off. And I also took this guy out. It snaps here in the bottom. Make sure it still has this retaining ring on it. It does have a certain way that it goes. It's kind of got a squared off um, head on one end. So uh, we need to go ahead and grab some grease and put that together. But I was looking at this and it is not like the factory one, I will tell you that. So I've got my doubts whether it'll work, but we're going to try it anyway. I went ahead and shoved the new piece inside the housing here. And what I don't love about it is it seems a little looser on the top here. And I noticed the head's not shaped the same, but um, it comes with like a little metal sleeve on it. Guys, there was not another metal sleeve in here. It says to take that out. There isn't one. Uh, so I put it in there with the metal sleeve on it and it seems to be working. The other thing is this seems a little long and it says not to trim it. So we're going to attempt to put it in and see if maybe it needs trimmed, maybe it doesn't. Um, it says if it needs trim, you've got an aftermarket unit. I can guarantee you that this is a factory unit. Um, it has the factory numbers on it. So it's not it, it's factory. So we're going to attempt to put it back together like that, but I need to go grab some grease and um, get some grease on this. The other thing I did do though, oh, I wanna show you, is I put, you know, the little um, piece that screws on the top, I did go ahead and put that in place with my 14 millimeter, so I've got that factory connection on. Their website offers, uh, I wouldn't call them great instructions, so you guys are gonna see firsthand if this works. If it doesn't, um, they do make a whole motor and assembly and guess what it's only like 85 dollars. so had i known this is 35 i think and that's 85 i probably would have done that but um i'd rather have a factory unit if i can especially since the motor works but either way let's go grab some axle grease that's what i'm going to use to put this back together and uh, see if we can reassemble some stuff so as i said i'm just using axle grease on this um you can get this pretty much anywhere i'll list it in the description down below just cheap axle grease just putting on the gears make sure there's no binding or anything and then we can go ahead and start kind of reassembling this piece by piece um this is going to be like i said a total learning experience for me as well guys um so as we go back together if i come up with any hiccups i'll definitely let you know this as i said goes in a certain way i'm gonna kind of put some grease along the sides You just want to keep you know water and stuff out of this put a little grease on this one that i took out even though it's going to slide back up in a minute still want to put some on it and now we're going to kind of build this thing back together so we're going to start with this guy remember if you had a washer make sure that it's still there this side did not i want to say the other side did though so we're going to put this this little guy kind of slides up. I'm just going to take it out of the way. See if we can get this in here and get it started. 
You know what I should have done? I should have put some grease on that. All right, we're gonna yank it back out if I can get it out of here. <laughs> My hands are all greasy now. Okay, we're just gonna put it along the edge as I roll it around. And you wanna make sure as this gear is spinning, that one that we put in first is spinning, and it is. What a mess this is. I hate this, like packing wheel bearings with this grease makes me a little nutty because I'm such a clean freak. So once we got that in, we're gonna move on to this drum. And you can see that it has little spots that it catches on this guy here. So we need to put it in. And then obviously that is what reels this up. Uh, so at some point, we're gonna have to hook um, one end of that within this. So we really need to get the antenna kind of fed in place. I don't know how I'm gonna do that and not get crap everywhere here, but. Looks as though it's gonna go in there. And I don't know whether it's out or in because I don't remember when I plugged it in which way it was going. Let's see if we can feed it in here. Obviously, you're, it needs to face towards the inside. Doesn't even act like the gears want to line up here. Okay, there we go. There it's going. This little spool here is what it's supposed to wind up on. Man, I'm not liking the way that looks. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this in here as well, because that's that's with the spool that I, sorry, that's the spool it lines up on. That's like the guide to get it in place, I suppose. Remember there's a washer in there. I left it in there. Now maybe we'll have an area for it to spool up on. Seems to be going in like it's supposed to. I just wonder how much, if we're gonna make it all the way to the end though. Remember I said it's a little longer. It looks like we may make it. All right, so I'm gonna push it in the rest of the way here in a second, but there is another washer that goes on top here. And then we're gonna to continue to feed this thing in here. Or real, oh. And I think I just lost my washer. It just flipped around the all right, we're going to start over and keep some pressure on that while we're doing it, apparently. Like I said, guys, we're learning together. And it's making me nuts because this is the mess all over my table or my toolbox. I got to find the washer that probably shot across the room. Maybe we're gonna keep a little more pressure on that. Okay, let me find the washer. We'll put the washer back on. We'll thread it back in like we had it. And uh, hopefully we can keep pressure up against it this time. You know you're lucky when you find a paper thin washer on the floor of your shop. The reason I'm not putting the top on yet is because for one, we're gonna have to screw it in place because we, um, remember we cut those factory pieces off, those factory plastic rivets, or we drilled those out. Um, but I wanna make sure that it spools all the way up, because remember I said it's a little longer, and if it doesn't, then 
obviously we may have it says definitely do not trim any off of it but look if it's not going to work it's not going to work so that's the way i feel about it anyway i think it's going to if i can just get i need more work area guys It seems like we have plenty of cable and like it's set the correct way. So here's what I'm thinking. We're going to set this back on here. You're going to have to keep pressure on this. try to get it to set back down in the channel it was in before and then we need to get some screws and I'm gonna find honestly guys I don't have anything out here that small I'm gonna have to take this off it's all gonna pop out again but um, I think your best bet is to use like something that hangs pictures so if you have any kind of picture frame hanging kit those screws are small enough to go into place um, at least I think so so that's what I'm gonna use yeah, it popped out. I figured it was going to. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim just a little bit off of it. I think it's too long. I know it says not to. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it with a um, razor blade. I'm going to line the other one up, the old one, because we didn't find a piece in there. And I'm going to trim it to that same length. Because that will keep this from pushing up as much and uh, give me more room in that spool so that's what i'm gonna do okay i got some trimmed off of it i don't know how much i trimmed off maybe six maybe four inches i guess about four inches i guess so we're gonna try again put our spool back on and i have my like i said i had my doubts on it working anyway so I don't know if this thing is spinning like the spool. I'm assuming it spins when the antenna is going up and down. Maybe not. But we want to go all the way down to where we can get our set screw in here. And you can turn the antenna. That's what I'm doing. I feel way better about that. It's not like poking out anywhere. So now maybe we can get this on. And it should snap pretty firm on there, guys. Like that. That's a good sign. So now I'm just gonna keep something heavy on this while I go grab some screws, but we could slide our motor back in place, get those two screws in. I guess I could do that. Um, we need to get our two small little Phillips in there. I'm going to go grab, I think I'm just going to go grab these now. We'll set this on top of it for now. But I'm thinking maybe we'll work. Let's go grab some screws and get this thing back together and test it. Here's what I came up with. Got a bunch of extras, you know, laying around. And so I'm gonna try to, I wanted to use something with um, a, a good size head on it because we wanna keep that clamp together. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use these guys. Um, they look like they'll cover what we need to cover. Uh, if you wanna use a shorter one here, you can because it does go into the motor, but we're, look, we're not, we're not dealing with much there. It's surprising that for this kit, it doesn't come with something, but it doesn't, so. 
we're just gonna screw these in here and hopefully that thing doesn't pop out. I'm gonna try to keep pressure on it here. While we're screwing it down. I don't think it's going to because it snapped in there pretty well. But you never know. Probably would be smarter for me to drill a pilot hole. I may end up, I think I'm gonna do that. Just a small, a little, little bitty pilot hole. So we got something to start with. I think it'd be a better option. Got a few pilot holes. That'll probably make my life a little easier anyway. This is a lot of work guys, if it doesn't work. These probably aren't, if it wasn't for the car shaking, as tight as it snapped on and hasn't popped off with my hand off of it, you don't have to have a ton of grab here. All right, we'll get these back in, and then I think I'll move to get the Phillips back in the motor here. This guy right here, and I think there was a ground strap under that, so I probably need to hook that up too. what I'm going to do is we're going to get this set screw in here so this thing doesn't walk around. So remember there's a washer on that. I tried to set these pieces where you could still see, you know, kind of where they went. That should keep that sturdy. And then where is my clamp? I'm going to have to kind of peel this apart because I forgot to put it on when I did all this. But that's okay. We can kind of smash it back together. Try to put that on while you're taking this stuff apart, guys. We should be able to get our screw in there now. And this isn't that big a deal. Somebody's flying by my house. I'm just gonna snug that down until I get um, these guys in. But there is this guy that goes on, I think it goes on that side. I don't think there's any way for it to go on the other side. Yeah, it goes on this side. So we'll put this in. Well, I said... This is why I don't do like small stereo repairs. I think I maybe twist it a little bit. Yeah, I am. Let's see if we can get one of these started. There we go. Now maybe we can get this one in place. There's like a plastic collar under that. I don't know if it acts as a spacer or what. And I'm not gonna snug these down all the way yet either because we may have to move that ground strap a little bit. I wanna be able to get to that. 
and we still have our ground that goes up top here and it goes down to the bottom. I believe it bolts here and then goes down to the bottom. So we'll get that in place as well. For the bottom, we've got our bracket and it only can go on one way. So if you tried to put it on the other way, it doesn't fit, you can see. So we have our ground strap underneath on this side and the other ground goes on the outside. So the hard ground strap on the inside on this side and this ground strap goes underneath on the other side. Same thing, I'm not going to snug everything up until we get it all in place. This guy's got to stretch up here. Once we have all this stuff back in place, then we can go through and snug up all our stuff. And we're going to go over there to the car and see, make sure you get it all back together, everything tight. And we'll go back and plug it in and see what happens. Let's go ahead. We're going to put our grommet in place at the bottom first. I just literally dropped it. We'll put it in place. Then we'll get our uh, vent or our drain hooked up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go through the car first. Kind of push it up. wants to go, it doesn't act like it wants to go in there. I don't know guys, I think because I probably shouldn't have put that 14 on top, we'll take it off real quick and see if that's the reason it won't go through and then we'll push it through. I'm not sure why that would have mattered, but maybe it does. I don't know. Okay, well, what's your guys' think? What's your guys' thinking? Do you think it's gonna work? What do you think? Yes or no? I'm thinking it's like a 50-50 shot here. Go ahead and plug our vent tube in. Or drain, I keep calling it a vent. And then we will put our bolt in, our 10 millimeter. And we only have two things to plug in, just the, uh, obviously the plug for power. And then we have our antenna itself. It made some noise just then when I plugged it in. I don't know whether that's good or bad. Okay, everything's plugged in. Let's put our 14 on top. And uh, let's go test it. I'm interested to see. I can tell you one thing, it sticks up further. It doesn't have the same like flush mount that the factory one would have. I don't know how much I love that. I noticed that when I was putting it together. But let's go grab the key and see what happens. So what do you guys think is going to happen? I want you to go down in the comments and tell me what you think. I'm saying it's about a 50-50 shot. Um, I don't love the way it went together. The fact that it made noise and didn't move when I plugged it in makes me think it may not work. Um, like I said, I just don't love the way it didn't look like the factory one. And it's got, eh, maybe it doesn't have as much play as I thought. But let's turn it on and try Okay. It 
See, here's what I don't like. See how it didn't go down all the way? Now I can push it down and make it go down. But it, I don't know, it just doesn't. Like that part right there, you see how it didn't go down all the way? I think that's where our difference is. Let's uh, check this out. Look at the one on the other Trans Am because it hasn't been messed with. See how flush it sets when it's closed? Now, like I said, I can, I can push this one down. See, I, I mean, I pushed it down and it seems pretty snug to push it but it still acts like it's coming up. It makes noise. I don't feel like it comes up as high. I wonder what my reception's like. Well, it works. Okay. Well, I, I guess this is kind of a win in a way. Because look, it goes up and down and it didn't before. It definitely isn't all faded and gross looking like the other one was. So, uh, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's worth it, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below again. Um, would I do it again with this? Probably not. I don't, I don't know. Look, it works. I guess I can come back and put my thumb on it and push it down if it bothers me that much. Um, to be honest with you, I unhooked the red one and the only reason I unhooked it was because I just, I was backing it under my lift and it was catching, I would forget. Um, even with the radio off, these things come up when you first start the car. And so it's like, it has to recognize the radio's not on and then it goes back down. And I forgot that one time, I had this thing under my lift and it came up and kind of kinked the antenna, I had to move it back over. So it's not like super great either, but I do feel like the factory one comes up a little higher. Maybe it's just in my head. I don't really know. But either way, it's finished. That is one thing closer um, on this car. It's like I said, we got the top replaced. Now we got the antenna replaced. I'm gonna go back in there and make the carpet all nice. And um, hopefully, what's up with my reverse lights being on? That's weird. That may be something, maybe it's in reverse. Uh, but either way, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. If you did like this video, like always, please go down there and smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, please go down there. Of course, hit the subscribe button. While you're down there, ring that bell icon. That notifies you every single time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.